Dream and Theogenic here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic evening and had a wonderful holiday. So tonight we're gonna to be doing agar transfers. So last session, we last class, we actually went over inoculating agar with um, liquid culture, swabs, prints. So tonight we're doing this open air. Um, it was brought to my attention that you guys felt like uh, the laminar flow hood was a little out and really not everybody's working with a laminar flow hood. So we're gonna raw dog it tonight. Laminar flow hood is off, so you should be able to hear me a little bit better. And I have misted my hands with alcohol. I'm gonna do that again. I'm also going to mist the air. I'm gonna create a bubble of clean air around me. I'm just gonna let that fall for a second. I am not wearing a mask. I have all of the airflow turned off. I did not turn off my heat. Uh, it's not currently running though. Um, so if you have a HEPA filter or anything like that, you wanna turn that off 30 minutes in advance. So first we're gonna look at Thresher. Now I do need to let you know that I'm using these sectioned off plates that were provided to me by uh, PFUNC because I use them to test liquid cultures, but I did not have to time to pour some fresh plates tonight. So I am actually going to be using these. Um, so this will give me the opportunity to do four quick transfers per section of my plate. So I'm starting out off here with Thresher. Um, I have offered, I offered this strain a while back and I uh, tested that LC, I saved a master for myself. I tested it recently to see if I could grow them again. If the LC was good, it looked good. So um, the key to when you're doing um, open air transfers is that you want to be very quick. It is your job to be speedy. So let's go quickly with this. I'm gonna open this before I open it. I'm gonna look at where I wanna do my transfer and I am seeing a couple good places, um, particularly right up here. Um, over here looks great. I think I'm gonna zero in for these these three spots for now. So holding my plate at an angle, trying not to talk over it. Mm -hmm. I just not wanting to go in there. I very rarely use a blade on my scalpel. I have small hands, I don't really need to. Try not to cross your hand with your over the plate. I, I know I'm not. I uh, truly myself personally do not worry about contamination a lot um, when I'm growing. Um, and the only time I really worry is when I'm working on liquid cultures that I'm going to be sharing with somebody else. That is uh, really when the game is on. Otherwise, I don't really worry because I know if I have contamination that I, uh, on agar anyway, not in my grow, that. I, I'm, I'm gonna be fine. It's not a big deal. Um, I, can, I, can, I can isolate the good genetics without that. All right, so this is actually a swab that I did on Black Shakti. I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna just grab it from a couple of places and then we'll do one that's contaminated. You always wanna work on your contaminated plates last. That's what's really important here. Um, because you don't want to introduce contamination to your air, especially if you're not using a laminar flow hood without being fully prepared to, uh, you know, be able to clean afterwards. And I apologize, my plate was not open. So this is a low nutrition agar I used for this uh, swab. 
so uh, there's not going to be a lot of rhizomorphic growth on it. Somebody on um, Instagram recently offered me a sterile lab technique class. I was amused by that. Um, it's not that I <laughs> don't know how to do it. It's more that I just, uh, in terms of when I'm working with specimens, I'm just, you know, playing with for myself. I, I just don't care um, on agar. It's, you know, I, my goal here with you guys is to teach you ways to do this that are quick, um, beginner friendly, not a lot of fussing. I feel like you can get so caught up in the, oh, well, if I do it exactly this way, it's going to be just right. And you spend so much time on it. And then something doesn't go well because we can't control everything. And you're just going to be so upset with yourself, you know, that you spend all that time on it. Uh, I feel like there's more success in volume, being able to move quickly. Um, you're giving yourself more opportunities for success than just, you know, putting all your chickens in one basket. So this is a pea sub. Uh, Sabernagosa. It is an exotic strain. Starting to get a little bit of a yellowing here. I'm actually just going to take a couple quick pieces of this and transfer it. And then I'm going to be going to grain with this. Again, holding my plate at an angle. Oops. Because by doing it... Uh, that way you're allowing less contamination to fall into it. If you need a little more time, if you're not as quick as I am um, on the gun, you can hold your plate tilted at your cover tilted at an angle. I am using a different scalpel between blade between um, sam samples. I'm not bothering to flame sterilize, um, just for the sake of time. I'm stacking these like this so I can label them and seal them up after. So now we have one that is for sure just a disaster, disastrously contaminated here that I want to grab. I will save this one for last. Um, this actually looks like black mold to me. So I, I feel like maybe I don't even want to open it. Um, but I want to, you know, it's, it's really important for you to decide when, when it's worth opening it to you when it's not. Um, so you can see in the front here that the mycelium is covering this. Oh, it's getting a little foggy. Well, now I just made it worse. The mycelium is starting to cover the contamination. And so I could, you know, I, I have an option here. I can open it. Um, it's probably going to, you know, be aggressively contaminated, but, and I could get a good transfer off of it. But at this point I started from spore on this one. So I'm going to actually skip this one because, uh, it's just not worth it to me to get an aggressive type of mold in my house. If that makes sense. So, uh, oh, here is a good one. So this one looks like it has a little bit of slime on it. It's an old plate. It's just uh, too much moisture, drying out on the edges, too much moisture in the center. Um, I want to show you how I do a transfer on a plate that I feel like is contaminated. Um, because I don't take a cut of it. What I like to do is take a fresh needle, like literally a, a syringe needle. And I'm just going to try to isolate some mycelium with this without picking up agar. And you just want to uh, 
dab it right into the agar or lay it on top is fine too. Give me some problems. I'll just go around the edge here. And this is a Purple Mystic clone that I'm working on that I did a long time ago. If you um, are thinking to yourself, oh, I wonder if I could just, you know, use this, these plates for multiple strains, I wouldn't suggest that. I mean, I have some of these plates where the mycelium is growing up over the edge. So I personally don't wouldn't recommend that. Um, if your plate starts to fruit, it can spore. It's just, you know, better to do the same, same, uh, isolation or strain on the same plate. So the purpose of doing it this way is that I was able to avoid um, getting much of the agar on there um, and just have mycelium, which is going to give it an opportunity to, to uh, grow with just the mycelium without whatever was on the agar. It was looking a little slimy to me. I hope this was helpful to you guys. I will be on at 7.30 Central Standard Time so we can discuss um, any questions you might have concerning this. And I love you guys so much and have the best night ever.